Uh, earthquake hit California. Did you ever read? Um, did you read Dune? Dune? Yeah. Yeah. I've read the first two and half of the third one. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's just why you said Fremen. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, if you, you know. Oh, no. So it's a, really that's a from the from the movie. Really. No, that's a joke in our house because Caroline's letterbox review for the movie just says, damn, Paul, number one Fremen fanboy. Because he just be everything he does in that movie is just to try to get to that chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, he take, yeah, he takes over the Fremen population. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. We were thinking we were talking about that. The other day. It's like this dude, motherfucking dude. He is not a leader, bro. He's just horny. He's no, just yeah. Horny. Well, that's kind of the point of the fuck the the story. It's yeah. like, no, like no man, like what is it? No man should lead all or something like that. What the hell is that old expression? That I just uh, make that up. One, no, it's one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. Chestnut roasting on an open fire. Chestnut, just one. <laughs> just one. This dude's got the smallest fire. It's on a Bunsen burner. Sipping <laughs> at your toes. Okay, you know what? I'm sure we what I'm sure we've talked about this before. I'm going to. I'm sure we've talked about this before, but forgetting Sarah Marshall fucking ruined a Christmas song for me. I still sing it. Oh, the weather outside is weather. I never ever sing the right words to it because that's when Paul runs in the ocean. He's singing it to himself. He goes, "The weather outside is weather." <laughs> oh, welcome to the show, everybody. Tis the season. My name's Mary. No shit. <laughs> Holy goddamn, where's the Tylenol? We're gonna have the hap hap happiest holiday since Bing Crosby tap dance to fucking Danny K. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Didn't See It But I Believe You. I'm Doug. I'm Clark, and this is episode 129 of I Didn't See It But I Believe You, the hap 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 happiest holiday show on the internet. Is this our third holiday episode or our second? This is our third. It's our third. This is our third. Last year, uh, we had just started re-recording. We'd been re-recording for about a month and a half. That's right. We were we were doing our videos, but we weren't yet very good at it. They were just videos of our side of the side of our body, and I hunched over like a fucking loaf. Well, to be clear, we're still not very good at it. No, we're very good at it. I see the reviews that people leave. Five star reviews. Yeah, thank you for all your five star reviews that only that we can only see. We're trying to talk to all the algorithm oh, yeah. to how to make it to where you can all read the reviews. I wish it. you guys could see the great stuff people say about us. The New Yorker had some really lovely words to say about us the other day, and I felt so sad that not everybody could see that. They the called us, they call <laughs> us the, uh, the smartest show on the internet. <laughs> The blurb that I saw for the New Yorker is seems like a bunch of guys I would just really like to spend time with. Oh, that's crazy. That's longer than the blurb I saw that just said problematic. But you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it's funny though, like thinking about, uh, sorry, I'm like, uh, not feeling my, great. No, my allergies just kicked my butt and that's about it. Dude, this is like 10, it's like 10 a.m. Uh, in our time. And this is what we, this remember what we used to record like this early all the time. I would like get up like at eight in the morning and drive to Austin <laughs> and do a show and you'd be like, all right, bye. I'm like, all right, guess I'm not hanging out with you after the show. And Oh, come on. Oh, come, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Um, anyways, but you know what we need? We need a Mintat. That's what we need. Speaking of Dune, and for those, that's what we need. The Mintad is like when they got rid of, so there was a Butlerian Jihad, okay? And essentially what that was in the world of Dune, uh, the lore, is they got rid of all AI. And it's called the Butlerian Jihad. And so, because AI, hello, hello Terminator. They're here. <laughs> they're here. <laughs> but essentially, they had to like uh, come up with uh, human computers, and they, they train these humans called Mintats, and they're like uh, computers, but human. We need one badly. <laughs> That's one ball chopping away from being those forced, uh, forced. Uh, what's the what they call? It? No, no, no. The way no. they used to, chem they would chemically castrate the boys. Tenor, tenor, the fucking tenors who could. Ah! No. Constratos. Constratos, thank you. Yeah, that's Damn, like one dinner. step away from that. <laughs> dinner, you cut his balls off. He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, like fuck? tenor is like an existing like uh, per- person of a choir. A we need more tenors. Oh, Cut their fucking what? balls off. <laughs> that's not a tenor at all. Uh, 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 yeah, that's pretty close to that though, right? I mean, they're just like you must learn this. Do you think? I was thinking because okay, we are absolutely fucked uh, comparatively to the robots. Not to say they're going to like destroy us or anything, although I suppose that's a possibility. But like, even just like we talked about this last week, but my job straight up told us a couple weeks ago, hey, you guys should definitely start looking at our career options because your job's not going to be here in two years. Like just flat out, it's not a possibility. He ended it by being like, we have the equipment to to do your jobs here. We just haven't started running it yet. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. oh, wild. Because like, yeah, y'all are a pretty fucking rich company and whatnot, but I'm assuming everywhere has contingency plans like that like what if people just decide not to work bob well this thing will do it and like at mcdonald's they uh there's that mcdonald's in one of the southern states that didn't want to it was a franchisee so they didn't want to raise the the minimum franchisees okay well they they're i i was under the impression some were controlled by corporate still though regardless y'all is that's what franchise is Oh, okay. Well, some of them are controlled by just people is what I'm saying. Kind of like how the dude who ran the church's chicken and Quero changed a bunch of stuff that normal churches didn't change. Yeah. Like, well, anyways, I'll, we'll you, talk you about what I'm saying. Here. Yes. Yeah. I you do. do what I'm saying though. Okay. So like, uh, I don't actually know who owned church's chicken, by the way, I was just an example. Uh, this, this McDonald's didn't want to raise the minimum wage or not their, their, their minimum rate for people there. So they fired all the kitchen workers. And Quero? No, no, no. It's like a, one of the southern states. I just can't remember which one. Okay, uh, one McDonald's you. replaced everyone. The dude funded out of pocket for AI that would do all the kitchen job. And the only person who stayed is the person actually making the food. So one person works there at a time. One. And everything else is done by robots. They they closed the dining room and everything. This dude's like, fuck it. I'm not paying more. We'll just close. And I'll the have robots like, do it all. And like that one dude that works all the robots is just like... Uh... He's like actually like making the burgers and stuff like that. And then I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he makes the burgers and then, uh, okay. So I'm assuming they're a lot like the robots we have. They look like Roombas that are really big with a, like a little mini fridge on top. Okay. Uh-huh. And they just roll around. They had them at the hotel. We stayed at our honeymoon too. One, they were our maids were robots. They would come to our room to clean and they would say, Hey, I'm here to clean. Can you get out of my way? Like they would talk to you and they have little blinky computer eyes. They're cute. What? Yeah. Did they very the bed? Yeah, they do everything. You you have to leave though, so you don't actually get to watch what they do. I don't know how they do it. Uh, the robots make the bed. Robots do everything. They they pick shit up off the floor. They make the bed. They straighten up your your dash. Everything. They do everything. Um, they what t- is they she day at work when you're a freaking housekeeper and you just do it to make a, a means to an end to put your kids through school and just uh, just saving up, saving up, saving up, just to get a cute little hey, piece of Wally Fort Worth, and all of a sudden it's like blinking little robots like can you get the fuck out of my way so i can make this bed and by the way you can't watch did i really fucking not tell you about this this is bizarre so we were fucking waiting on an elevator on fucking in the elevator yeah so no we we, we were just there so there's like you know how it is at hotels we're on our floor and there's like six elevators around us and i I get it i'm gonna go you push one button and any of the door any of the elevator doors could open right so like we're just standing in the circle and I've pushed the button and it's been like five minutes and we're like, what the fuck is going on? And there's people sitting in the hallway and they're laughing. And I'm like, you know me, I'm paranoid. And I'm like, are they fucking laughing at us? Not being able to get an elevator and shit, but they're laughing because they have just, something has gone wrong in their room that they're not in control of. Okay. It's like a family and the kids are in the hallway laughing. The parents like run out. They're like, what the fuck? They're just like, something's going on in their hotel room. I hear a beep. I turn around. It's the elevator behind me, right? Doors open. It's just that robot. He took the elevator up to come fix their room. <laughs> it was the best part. I'm like, what's up, dude? And he goes, hello. He's got these fucking little blinky computer eyes on the screen. He goes, hello. And then it goes, please get out of my way so I can exit the elevator. But we're not anywhere near him. We're like on the sides of him. He can't get over the hump at the front of the elevator. So he just starts spinning in circles saying, please help me get off the elevator. Please help me get off the elevator. But nobody wants to touch it. So it's just spinning in the elevator. And finally, it moves back enough for the elevator doors to close. And the doors are closing. And you can see it's spinning. It's going, please help me get off the and It just disappears. It goes down. So there are definitely still some kinks to work out in the AI. 
CSI fucking house cleaner machine. No, I did not see any of those machines. That does sound quite adorable. It was uh, hilarious, dude. It's funny because no. they just keep talking. So they're fucking, it's stuck, but it's going, please help me get off the elevator. Please. <laughs> when do you think you're going to like, okay, so. Well, well, why did you? Why, what got us there? We were talking about robots doing something. Oh, your job. Yeah, when my you, job. Oh, but like you think that, like, okay. <laughs> so McDonald's is going automated. It's probably for the best, honestly. Well, honestly, yeah, really, it probably is. I think people are missing the point when they're saying like we'll replace you with AI. I think a lot of people immediately jump to like, well, what about the people who really need a job? Like, this is how this works. A pendulum swings in one direction, which means you now have to find work to help that pendulum swing. So there's going to be, you know, people who do AI maintenance, I'm sure. And fucking people whose job it is to monitor the AI. Like, I, I think people are assuming this is going to be like short you circuit or fucking I can't believe it's not human or whatever. It's not going to be that. It's just going to be a machine we have to work on all the time. You gotta be careful, man, because like uh, it's not necessarily about the the AI now. It's about it's not, it's about the robots that build the robots. You know what no, I mean? No, you're right. You're right. Super. So uh, you're talking when you were talking about how they did the 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 Dune people and turned them into like kind of human supercomputers. The fact of the matter is, you you can only take that so far, right? So like in reality. <laughs> That's only going to go so far before the computer just absolutely smokes you in every fucking sense of the word already. Like, if you go back and you look at, you know, that really fucking insane explosion that I was obsessed with in T Engine? Yeah. It's this, okay. So that was the world's biggest supercomputer exploding. Okay. It makes you wonder why, you know, but not to get into anything. But yeah, that was the world's biggest supercomputer. And like the things that computer is capable of, most computers aren't capable of. So you have to assume that like the way pendulum swing is that that fucking technology will eventually be the more fucking prevalent what's, technology. What's the world supercomputer now? Something we own. How funny is that? It, the craziest shit was that the week of that T engine explosion, there were a bunch of stories about how Obama was going to go look at that supercomputer and that he really wanted America to try to, to come up with their own. And then boom. No more T engine supercomputer. Like, oh, I guess we have the biggest supercomputer now, huh? I'm looking it up to make sure, but at the time like, it at the time like, it left oh. us with the world's one. He's oh. like, oh, do you have the biggest supercomputer? Say, like, oh, it exploded. Hey, yeah, Joe, uh, it's over so now, is, bro. Who has the biggest supercomputer now? It's oh, I guess we now. do. It's not us what? anymore. So we, after T and after T engine, it was us, but then Japan came up with something oh. called. The Fugaku supercomputer, and it is, uh, it is the the biggest, fastest, best one. It's the TO. It's the top five hundred. Is the project that ranks all the supercomputers in the world. This is easily number one by leaps and bounds. I rather have Jap the Japanese have that technology than us. Uh, as long as it's not China or us, I feel good about it. Frankly, yeah, it's or like Russia. You know. Russia wouldn't fucking. I wouldn't trust Russia with a bunch of shit like that. Yeah, Russia would just be making. They, 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 how do uh, we make more vodka with the super uh, computer? In Russia, computer super you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder, like, uh, would it be a mis so? Okay, and I this may be like a touchy way to say this. So, let me preface this by saying this is not a, a commentary on the people of this country or their fucking anything. Which, would it which be, country? I'm, I'm, well, I'm gonna say. So, would it be a bad idea to instead of a like these are we're talking about all superpowers that have these computers right it's all the world's superpowers that have them what if we just fucked around and gave this fugaku one to like i don't know south africa or something and just saw watch what happens watch you see if they do us. anything with it you don't give it south africa south africa oh, you, you, think, fucking... you, you think that we got it bad with our with our political unrest and then us like finally like really no no, no i don't mean like, of, like racism I, stuff. The i don't mean south africa i mean the south i mean the south of africa not the country south africa like we're gonna southern africa, africa. No, we're going to go ahead and talk about South Africa. Okay, you can't just say that's Southern not a good Africa idea. because Southern Africa is a, a is a southern part of a continent. That's not a country; it's a continent. That's the country of South Africa, and they they weren't even allowed to have interracial marriages until the nineties. Joel, that right, place no, is no, no. freaking bass backwards. I'm, I, I agree, but I, I said Southern Africa, and I'm, I mean like. 
the Congo River area. I'm pulling it up to see like if I can find like Zimbabwe and Angola, those places, like the bottom of Africa where it's very poor. Like, what if we just gave them a supercomputer? The Dutch would take it. And then we'd <laughs> have to deal with the Dutch. Use a supercomputer to wipe everybody's brains. I thought the Chinese were down there though. Huh? Like I thought that's I thought the Chinese were currently trying to take over Africa. Not the Dutch. <laughs> The Dutch, the Dutch are the ones that colonized South Africa, the country. No. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, and South Africa is in Southern Africa. That's crazy. <laughs> no shit. What do you know about the Great Dyke? Tell me all about it. It's in Central Zimbabwe. It's a region of rich mineral deposits. It's called the Great Dyke. D Y K E, like Van Dyke. That's the one. How cool uh, is that? Listen, I get that mining lithium and stuff there. Lithium. Yeah. You can mine lithium? Where do you think you, lithium comes from? Purdue? <laughs> uh, yeah, crazy. So it can be mined from pegamite and recovered from mineral sp spodamine. Sp spodamine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, sp spodamine. Um, okay. What time is it? 16 minutes into this thing? All right. <laughs> Don't why are you even why do you care? Because I want to because I because I wanted to do this, but I wanted to give it a little bit of time to get into the episode so people don't feel like slap faced by it. Okay, so it's 17 minutes in now. I'm gonna go ahead and warn everybody. If you uh aren't interested in hearing spoilers for Spider-Man No Way from Home, um maybe skip 10 minutes and then I'll give a big thumbs up on the screen and we'll put in the timestamp when you should come back or something. I don't know. Um Give you like ten more seconds to go away. We're gonna spoil spoiler. the whole fucking thing. We're gonna spoil spoiler. the whole fucking thing in like ten minutes. No way home, Spider Man. Spoilers uh, in like five, four, three, two. You better run if you haven't seen it. One. All right, let's talk about Spider Man. No way home. And also, dude, it's getting to the point, man. Like, if you don't see it in the weekend, uh, uh the the opening weekend. You know what I mean? So that's on you, man. Right? Because the memes just start coming. Yeah. Was... I've, I've been surprised, though. Uh, it's Monday now, right? Or Tuesday? I've been Tuesday. surprised how little uh, spoiler memes I've seen. I've seen one, and it was in a group of people that have all already seen it. So I yeah. was like, oh, that's fine. But like, usually they reveal all this shit like weekend of. I knew everything that happened in Endgame before the night was over that it released. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> but I think we should just both start off by saying, have you seen any of the Tom Holland Spider-Mans? Not one. That's Even. the only one I've seen. <laughs> Same. Same. Which, frankly, I think might have been good for us. Because I didn't see any of the Andrew Garfield ones. Have you seen all the Tobys? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I, I obviously, I too grew up on the Tobys. Love the Tobys. Look, frankly, I even like a lot of parts of 3. I remember walking out of the theater for 3 and CJ being like, man, that movie sucked. And me being like, really? Because I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't like Venom when he wasn't Venom. I didn't like, like, Topher Grace as Eddie Brock. And yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously, I was sort of confused when the whole dancing scene was going on. But outside of those two moments, is that movie really that bad? I kind of thought it was good. I just haven't seen so much. The other one, he's like evil Spider-Man 2. Yeah. He's like doing the dancing. Yeah, he's three. got like the emo haircut. And he's doing this to women on the street. And he's dancing. Yeah, it's shit, cheesy it's hilarious. as fuck. Yeah, for sure. But outside of that scene, it's not a bad movie, dude. But it's also it's Sam Raimi. What do you expect? You know what I mean? That's like kind of like well, his like. He, go ahead. No, 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 no. you please. He hated Venom. He didn't want to make that movie. He wanted his movie was just Sandman. And Fox was like, listen, dude. Uh, or Sony rather was like, this is actually all pretty open now. In the past couple of weeks, they've been talking about it a lot. The Sony was like, look, dude, fucking. Obviously, you have the reins somewhat because two made us uh, the most money any movies ever made us. And it got like four stars from everybody. But like, we really want Venom in this movie. And we would love for you to start setting up the Sinister Six. And he from the beginning was like, this is a bad idea. Venom needs his own movie to set him up like uh, it could be a spider-man movie but he needs to be the only villain it yeah, should yeah. not it we shouldn't make up a new venom story it needs to follow what's in the comic and the problem is i don't like what's in the comic so can we please not do that and sony was like no bro venom's in the fucking movie sandman's in the fucking movie and you need to find another villain too and he was just like oh jesus so 
he he went and he shot it and uh, knew the whole time it wasn't working. Topher Grace knew the whole time it wasn't working. Topher Grace was in pain the entire time because the dentures they gave him when he got the symbiote, they didn't fit. So all of his lines are delivered terribly because he couldn't move his mouth right. It hurt. Yeah. It was cutting his gums every time he tried to talk. So he had to like, rah, 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 rah. And it makes his, all this shit seem cringy. Uh, they released it. They told Sam Raimi, like, look, dude, uh, we still want you to do four, but we're going to like kind of guide four. And he was like, you motherfuckers just guided this movie straight into the trash, bro. Nobody even likes it. And so they were like, fine, you can come up with a story. And then Kirsten Dunst that week did an interview where she said, look, I know the rumors are that they're not going to let us do four, but uh, Amy Pascal, who was running Sony at the time, would never get rid of me, Toby or Sam. That would make the movie a disaster. And then the next day, Sony announced that they were canning Spider-Man 4 and then two hours later announced that they had already written a reboot and that it was going to start filming in November. So like in the span of a week, the movie came out, didn't get great reviews. Sam Raimi was going to make four. They did the interview with Kirsten Dunst. Amy Pascal had changed her mind. They canned the movie and started the reboot in the span of a week. (laughs) Damn. And Kirsten Dunst was doing like weird, like bartender pop-ups in Austin. Is she really? Well, she's about she to was. get an Oscar nomination. Yeah, so for I what? She's uh, the power of the dog, an absolutely incredible movie on Netflix that everyone should watch if they like like slower westerns. But let's stick on Spider Man for now. Okay, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I saw it. It's um, I mean, it was just. I mean, our, go ahead. I'll let you. Ta- I'll take. Let you take the reins on this one. Okay. Well, I mean, frankly, I know nothing about the story. We did a. We did a re. I've so I'll just say I've seen. The first like four or five of the Avengers movies, like in order. So like from Iron Man till probably like Guardians of the Galaxy. I've seen all those. Yeah, okay. And then the last I've one seen, that I've, I've seen, seen in I've seen you know, a few of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. like they, they, they kind of like, you know, when you watch any of them, you knowing just like with the internet in your back pocket, you can you can figure it out. Drift, yeah. Although it does get pretty convoluted like later down the line. Cause I say I've seen like the first five, but really that means there's 21 movies that I may not have seen. So uh, yes. I think the last one I saw in theaters was Captain America Civil War, which would be the first one that had Black Panther and Spider Man. So I've seen Spider Man in one of these movies, but he's barely in that fucking movie. He's at like the very end. Yeah. Um, I just don't care. It's not that they're bad movies. I get that they're great. You know, they're, they're, they are what they are. And frankly, if I was a kid, I'm sure we would be eating them up. I just get nothing out of them. They there's all so kind of many. feel the same to me. You know, yeah, you go so to a movie. Many. It's two hours long. Superhero has a problem, fixes the problem, saves the world. The stakes are always so fucking high now. The world's always ending. Like, I kind of miss when it was like the Phantom just had to fight this one dude on the pirate ship because he was trying to steal some money. Or like the Shadow had to get one guy or Spawn even. Yeah, he was trying to get the army of hell, but just to get back to his wife, not to save the fucking world or anything. Yeah, Um, yeah, for sure. I like smaller stakes, but uh, it just makes things better. But anyway, my point being that, like, I haven't seen any of those fucking movies. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I haven't even seen Endgame or Infinity War. I've seen parts of it. Um, yeah. I've seen the parts that matter that got spoiled, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that being said, I love Spider-Man. And I really liked the first Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie. I haven't, I, I've seen the second one, but it's not good. So I remember nothing about it. And uh, I just, you know, I had this weird feeling at the beginning, like, oh, I bet this one's going to be dope. And then when they announced the villains, I was like, oh, oh, because we had, we've all seen the cartoon that just came out. So I kind of got the feeling like, are they is that what this is? You know what I mean? <clears throat> but yeah. so the big spoiler is, yes, that is what this is. <laughs> that yeah, is what obvious. this is. And dude, in like the trailers and stuff, they're like, obviously, a lot of those takes, they took out all three Spider-Man, just like that one in there. Yep. But uh, yeah. I got to say, man, uh, I thought it was kind of lame. <laughs> the movie the movie yeah what oh wow we, crazy we took a four-year-old with us so he had a lot of fun and that was great you know what i mean but like and also i it's it's a superhero movie it's supposed to be fun and it was fun but i'm like man kind of like going in on what you're talking about like them like cramming the sinister six or whatever the fuck they're called or forcing forcing bad guys it's like all they did and they it was like i don't know there was no it wasn't like as creative as it was to have a multiverse it just wasn't that creative it's like we've seen this all before and they're just like recycling old bad guys and i love willem dafoe but willem dafoe was just like i don't know 
they just all phoned it in. And even oh, like oh, Joker- this is so crazy to me. We're gonna we have such different opinions on this movie. Yeah, I love it. it. Was, That's gonna make this episode so much better. I want to hear was, more about it. Was what great. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. It was a great fun and like really fun to watch. The action scenes were awesome and stuff. But it's just like man, like I'm like they couldn't. I wanted a new bad guy. You know what I mean? Fair. Personally, That's That's and I, it's like man, you're just rehashing old lame bad guys like the sandman is lame the lizard dude is lame nah, uh, the lizard slaps bro dude and he doesn't even ha- and like and like they really couldn't even like you know what i mean like there's so many like nobody had like they couldn't build any stories at no, all no, i got you you feel like there were too many threads and none of them were actually cr- cr- turned into yeah. anything yeah, and like yeah. the Doctor Strange part. Of the, anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did not. No, no, I, 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 that's fan. That's fascinating to me because I th- I didn't know that before we started recording. We've kind of just been speaking in hyperbole, so I wasn't really sure where you were were on it. But that's fascinating to me because we have the same. Uh, we went into it the same. I know yeah, just yeah. as little about it as you. We fucking loved it. Caroline's putting it on her top ten, and I don't think she's seen a single Marvel movie besides this yeah. one. Uh, yeah. I thought just to just to counter the things you said. I, I look, Sandman, you know, whatever. Thomas Hayden Church is a good actor, but I've never really thought he was right for that anyway. It's kind of weird seeing him as sand. So I'll yeah. give you Sandman. I'm not a big Sandman guy. I love Dr. Connors as the lizard dude. I think he's fucking nuts. Like, just the way he, he doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to turn people into lizards. Like, I love that they kept reiterating, like, nah, this dude used to want to do something, but now he just wants everybody to be <laughs> lizards. That's very comic booky to me. Like, very, yeah, like... Yeah. But but I'm but, assuming this is Tom Holland's last Spider-Man. No, fuck no. This is the start of another trilogy where he's finally going to be the Spider-Man we all wanted. So like that was always my biggest issue with these is when I saw him in Civil War, he's fucking like he's talking about being better than all the other Spider-Mans already like gadget-wise and shit. And it's kind of fucked up cuz he had no origin story at that point. He had no like he, he we didn't give a shit about that kid. That's why I never saw the others. I was like I don't give a fuck but he's already Spider-Man. Like what the fuck? I like, I I also don't want to see the Uncle Ben origin story anymore, but like I was like who the fuck is this dumbass kid swinging in? Um, yeah. But that being said, like uh one problem everyone had apparently that I've been like hearing from people and shit is that he was always less Spider-Man and more Iron Man Jr. Like yeah. Tony was his mentor. He had all the gadgets, he had the helmet shit, he had like everything was from Tony Stark, okay? Yeah. And so like the apparently according to my buddy Mikey, the first two movies are very much iron man jr but he has webs okay and like all of his beats sort of mirror tony's and that's why in this third one someone calls him someone says he died as iron man jr or whatever or something there's like a line about how if he dies he would go out as iron man's kid or, or he's no longer just iron man's kid or something i don't know it was one throwaway line but in the movie so like massive spoilers but like aunt may aunt may dies which so there was actually that was one that was really nuts. i did not see that coming uh also i do love the meme that shows the original aunt may from the toby ones and then uh sally fields from the andrew garfield ones and marissa tome and it says she went from aunt may to aunt hell yeah i would (laughs) (laughs) Uh, is so hot in that movie she's so hot always but man she gets hotter as she gets older it's fucking nuts uh but that being said so like uh there's this really there's actually a really important scene with all three of the spider-mans and they're uh they're on a they're on, what are they on like the statue of liberty or something like that and they fucking talk about their personal tragedies because at that point tom holland spider-man his only tragedy has been I losing know, tony stark losing tony yeah. stark and 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 losing possibly may having, and well no not yet not yet i'm talking about prior to aunt may his only personal tragedy has been losing tony stark and the possibility that his girlfriend and best friend won't remember who he is. But at yeah. that point, that's still just a possibility, right? And the other two are like, dude, in the in the amazing Spider-Man movie where Andrew Garfield drops Gwen Stacy, and he, he so like the way he she dies, they make it totally his fault. He fucking because in the comic books, doesn't she just hit the ground? He doesn't catch her in time as she hits the ground or some shit. Shit, I couldn't tell you, man. Okay, I, I think he I think she character. gets thrown off. I think Gwen Stacy gets thrown off of a bridge or a building and he tries to save her but he can't get to her in time she hits the ground in the movie he fucking swings down and catches her in time but when he pulls his fucking web back it's too much uh pressure and it snaps her neck which is i thought fucking nuts i was like holy shit when it happened i was just like no fucking way yeah 
so and they make it like totally his fault that emma stone dies in that movie so like uh when he was talking about how he couldn't catch gwen i was like yeah that was pretty serious and then when toby dude toby's scene with uncle ben sets off a whole fucking trilogy it's yeah, yeah. fucking good it's easy to look back now and be like well we've heard that a million times but at the time uncle ben's dying and he hits him with the line about responsibility it's like that's a great scene and yeah that carries <laughs> it's cheesy it's cheesy it's I mean, cheesy. in the movie i mean in their written in their in their own world yeah but it's like toby mcguire stepping in it's like this is so fucking lame but he's and 47 like, though i i know it's just like no they don't need to do this like none of this needs to happen they don't they owe did, it though. They to did. anybody no no in the movie world they didn't need to and they, but they also didn't intend to it wasn't their fault they were there it's fucking tom's fault they're there because he fucked no, up the I spell understand. i'm just saying the whole story like it, it's like that whole direction it's like oh let's do a movie where we bring all the spider-mans from past mediocre oh not the sam raimi one but like the andrew garfield and also they fucking go in so hard on andrew garfield's peter parker i mean he's like i love you guys like thank you like they just like no well this is why on. so this is why uh i had to make sure that i had to look a lot of this up to make sure it wasn't just me thinking this it's not this is intentional so you want to talk about fan service this entire movie is built around what the fans wanted so yeah and it a made a terrible it made almost a, it made a bad movie they don't need so a wild for me like dude us like that's like when the rest of development came out of that new season mm. season four well, like we right, did this, right. they're like we did this for y'all like we didn't but really have to do this like well, they yeah, also you did that. listen to us they did that for sonic and we fixed the movie well yeah but sonic <laughs> there is exceptions i'm not saying no no i know i know i know but i guess the opinion is is that toby mcguire was the best peter parker hands down this is what everyone says toby mcguire best peter parker sure. andrew garfield best spider-man just in a bad movie i have to say as well andrew garfield in the first one fucking bangs he's such a good spider-man he's fucking hilarious he's really quick he's hot that's a really important thing dude. like when he came out of that fucking portal caroline was like oh my god like he looks fucking good in this movie bro and he looks good in those movies and that was one thing that was always interesting is yeah peter parker's a nerd but once he becomes spider-man he's supposed to not be a nerd anymore it's sort of like his awakening right when he's got the mask on and andrew garfield nailed that and then tom holland everybody just kind of didn't like him at all because of the iron man thing so in doing this they send in garfield first right as spider-man he stays as spider-man through the whole movie he's never really peter parker it, until he's like having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with him right toby comes out in civilian clothes he's got his spider-man thing underneath but he's 47 he tells him i don't fucking really care about any of this stuff anymore and i just keep my suit on under my shit because honestly i'm old as fuck and i don't have time to just go around changing into outfits and stuff so and like obvious andrew hits him with the you look like a cool youth pastor line these are all things that the fans have said that they put into it also come on man the three the three of them pointing at each other in that scene had me fucking losing my shit more than when they walked out yeah you that see, had I mean, me yeah. laughing so hard though i mean yeah i get it and like i'm not like i said it was a fun movie and i get it but i'm just saying it wasn't that good it just wasn't good and like the even the action the freaking orange goblin fight with tom holland was pretty dope like Fuck when they're like sick. Like when he's like freaking power slamming him, yeah, power bombing him through like levels of floor. Uh, yeah, that was dope as fuck. That's that was pretty tight. Green Goblin, by the way. What I say? Orange Goblin. You just picked That's another brand. color. <laughs> <laughs> Orange Goblin's a band. <laughs> picked another color. <laughs> so, so, anyways, but that whole that whole area. That where that fight is like where it says long island city that's in queens yeah, yeah. that's like right when you cross over the bridge in queens that's where my sister used to live forever in those buildings where they had she those fights like, fucked up by those things they just come <laughs> and fuck her up every day go on about her business so anyways i used to i used to hang out with my sister at her apartment in the in the, there where they is had that, that the fight. apartment where she had the houseboat that would take her across the river i'm still <laughs> fucking blown away by that when you or you or her told me she had a her own personal boat at her apartment that would float her across the river every day to get to work. I was like, what the fuck? What are you I have no idea what you're talking about? I heard I it was mean, called the SS Spodamine. I mean, <laughs> oh, get it like Spider-Man, Spodamine. Spodamine. All right, sorry, go ahead. No, I know. Uh, anyways, so I've, cool movie. 
Like I said, I don't even know what to say. I don't know. I you mean, took a four year old, so I feel like I shouldn't even have to ask this. But did y'all stay for the after credit scenes? Do you want me to tell yes, you? Yes, we stayed for everything. We stayed for everything, okay. and it was it was fun. It was a fun movie. I'm not taking that away from it. I sure. am just saying there is absolutely whoever wrote that film was just like I would be like, dude. Next time, take what the fans say and Easter egg a few things, but don't make this whole movie a giant fucking easter egg and the yolk is just like a huge you know what i mean it's like no no i get you although so much time and so much great potential was wasted with having three spider-mans just kind of just standing around and just like phoning it in no no i hear you i don't agree but i hear you i think that's probably <laughs> I think there's probably a dozen or t two dozen of you that probably feel that way. I think that they are likely never going to listen to your advice because the movie just made 300 million this weekend. No, <laughs> no, no, it's just crazy. Can we talk about that for a second? I don't know if y'all realize this, but theaters have been fucking struggling for the better part of two years. And uh, the highest grossing movie this entire time has been uh, Shang-Chi, which tapped out at... Four hundred and thirty-two million worldwide. Okay, I believe in America it only made like two hundred and twenty. Okay, so like domestically two twenty, worldwide four thirty-two. This weekend, this weekend on opening weekend, Spider-Man domestically made two hundred and sixty million dollars. Jesus Christ! Six hundred million worldwide. It is now the third highest-grossing film of all time after its opening weekend. Of all time. Yeah, uh, like, like fastest rather. Not not. Oh. It, it will likely end up in the top five highest grossing films of all time if it has normal. If it has the legs that it looks like it's gonna have. It currently has a ninety one on Rotten Tomatoes, but an A plus from audience. No, I'm sorry, a ninety eight on Rotten Tomatoes and an A plus from audiences, which is unheard of. That means every person walking out of the theater says, "I loved it." To get an A, to get an A, they have to say. I liked it a lot to get an A minus. They have to say, I liked it. Everything under like, that. <clears throat> but if you, you, I feel like you like it because you're like seeing like, you know, like those, those pictures where it's like recreating a picture you took with your dad when you were yeah, five years old. That's exactly old. why I liked it. Yes. Yeah, that's I'm not, why. I'm not saying that's not why I liked it to see Toby swinging around again and to see Andrew up there with them was great. I could give a shit less about Tom Holland. I, but dude, I thought the May shit was good, but honestly, it was those uh, two that made me love it. Doc Ock was he was great. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have to talk shit to you for a second. Willem Dafoe is fucking awesome in this movie. But I'm not Taking saying he's him not. out of the mask was such a good idea, dude. It's like, but it's like Willem Dafoe. It's like, dude. It's like his. his all right. So the the Iron Man Junior mercs Orange Goblin any given Sunday, dude. Any given but he's day. He's always only. historically he struggled with him though. Name one time he's been able to just beat him. It's never happened. We're talking about a multiverse, and we're not saying we're saying that the best, the best, the best. Oh my God, Spider Man, equipment wise and most ferocious. Oh, you is mean Tom, Tom Holland? Yeah, so, but he like, doesn't know how to deal with the psychological shit that Green Goblin has going. That's the biggest problem. He, really he wants to like. He, he and wants to enough, like him. They don't even build it. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, he went to a freaking. He went to see Aunt May one time, and now it's like, now I can't. I can't deal with this dude because he. No, 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 no. I May is like this guy came here and he sass for you. No, no, no. I don't think it's that. I think it's that he, he's okay. So this one's kind of a pussy, right? He fucking he doesn't. He's not. He hasn't been. That's kind of the point of the movie. He's he hasn't been put through anything like the others have. So when his his aunt's like, give this dude a shot, and he sees that he's got good in him he ignores everything else whereas toby mcguire or andrew garfield would have been like nah dude i don't think you can stay here i'm gonna put you back in that box you're getting way too talkative and you're doing way too many scientific experiments just out in the open i think i'm gonna put you back in the box like tom's like this dude's doing science well shit man that takes care of like 50 percent of my work i'm gonna go hang out with my girlfriend in the hey, whole like that in the whole like uh dr strange take i like dr strange a lot i wish that uh this is my first time to ever see him i thought he was okay i wish he was a little bit more in it i guess i don't know that was pretty cool i like Do the idea because that would just been another stories. person clouding up the plot though I, well i know but then they like ripped him out then they put these like goofy ass freaking old school 
I don't know. I just feel like if, in the world of reboot that they, they took the opportunity to mash it up with a bunch of shitty villains. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Look, I love the villains, but I, I love Auk and Goblin. I thought Lizard was cool. I could care less about, uh, about Electro. Look, I'm going to be so honest. My opinion has not changed. Jamie Foxx is what ruined the second Amazing Spider-Man movie for me. I thought surely they'll rewrite his character and give him something better to work with if they're putting him in this movie. And yeah, he looks cool, but my God, his writing in these movies is so fucking bad and borderline racist. Everything he says is a like stereotypical black joke. Like, oh, damn, he's basically going, damn, every time something crazy happens. It's yeah. pretty weird. It's annoying. He only jokes. He, dude, this guy has a great story. They set him up to have a great story in that second movie. And the second he becomes Electro, I get his personality is supposed to change too. He goes from being a super nerd to being this like, he feels the power or whatever. But man, does he really go from being a super nerd to just being a stereotype? Like that's what they do. They make him, they turn him from nerd into Jamie Foxx's stand-up comedy. That's what it turns into. It's very weird to me. I don't know, man. It's bold take. Um, but with that said, wait, 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 wait. I give wait. Um, last thing on this uh, movie. Yes, on this movie. Um, to oh yeah. So uh, I was saying all that shit about Holland and being a pussy and all that to build it up to like that with the, this new trilogy. I think the reason they brought in those other Spider Mans and the old villains and all that is to remind us what the other Spider Mans have been through and done sort of a reminder that like this spider-man hasn't done this so now that he has a tragedy the movie ends with he has nobody because he has no it all the way yeah it's he has nobody he has no one and he's it shows him that great shot of him sewing his suit this motherfucker yeah. can no longer use the stark industry shit he can't hit up stark industries he can't hit up any avenger he can't hit up anybody we're so finally going to see a spider-man that has to figure out life on his own and Tobey Maguire is the only one that can that makes his own webs out of his yes, own body. Yes, which was yeah, That's and that funny. scene that was, was funny, right? Because everyone, when that first movie came out with Tobey, was going, "Wait, wait, what? He's doing what? It just comes out of him? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a spider? That makes more sense. That makes great does, sense." It's it's really gross. And that's why when he's right, dude, I, it's such a quick moment. But later in that fight, Andrew's swinging one way and Toby's swinging the other. And Toby shoots out of his hands like this to try to get Lizard that's jumping at both of them. And it hits Andrew Garfield in the face. It's a, very quick. It hits him in the face. And as he swings across the scene, he goes, gross, and just flings it off of himself. It happens so fast, but that had me laughing pretty hard. That was, that's funny. Uh, so, I, what did I, I said? What? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. And I, I did want to say with the, the after trailer scene, I'm kind of disappointed to see. I think that kind of basically is confirmation that Tom Hardy's Venom is not going to be in it. Because they zap Tom Hardy away and just leave that little bit of Venom. So I'm assuming they're going to recast Venom. But that sucks because this gay Venom is the best. It's the <laughs> best. Those movies slap. They're so funny to me. So, uh... That's a weird way to recast somebody. But why did they zap him away? Who's zapping him away? That's the, so that's actually cutting to during the big fight. Uh, and he's getting zapped back to his universe when they close the loop or whatever. Uh, he's there to get Peter, but the loop closes and sends it back. Did you see the second Venom? No. Okay, that's the second Venom's after credit scene is Venom. And so Venom is able to just leave Tom Hardy's body. Now they kind of, they're, they're like an odd couple, gay couple. They just bicker and hang out. It's so good. Um, but Venom's watching TV and he goes, I hate that guy And the camera pans over. And it's Tom, it's a Tom Holland, Spider-Man swinging through the streets. And so that movie ended with a very strong implication that he was coming. And this movie ends with him. He did make it here, but when the loop closed, it sent Tom Hardy back, but part of the symbiote stayed behind, which is the gotcha. actual storyline of Venom. So now the, the symbiote can just attach to somebody in that time because this is from actual Venom lore. The symbiote will remember everything that all the other symbiotes been involved in. So gotcha. the actual twist right there is that someone will remember Peter Parker as Spider-Man because yes. Venom will remember everything. I got gotcha. you. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, no, it wouldn't because that symbiote would be brainwashed too. No, the symbiote yes. in the scene. No, 
yes. the symbiote remember no the symbiote's the only thing that can remember everything it will remember everything that anything the symbiote's ever been involved in did that's an actual plot except, for, except for that pot except for that part because it was except for that pot is that except my that fucking pot. daughter in there <laughs> uh isn't it uh isn't it? but anyways so uh, i give it a a solid seven out of for ten sure. for sure that's I what gave i give it, it. I gave it a, a letterbox four out of five. Uh, and I to my letterbox review, I'm pretty proud of it. I've turned into a complete dickhead over there. I don't say anything serious anymore. Uh, I don't, only thing I know about letterbox is just that you mentioned it on the show. That's about it. It's just a site where you go and like leave a star rating and a review. And it like makes a diary of everything you saw in the past couple of years. It has turned into a stand up comedy arena. Let me see what jokes I can make about this movie and get the most likes and get on the, there's like a couple Instagram accounts that'll post up the funniest reviews. My Jesus. review for Spider-Man was uh, when Spawn came through the portal, I lost my shit, but the kid next to me didn't know who he was and threw up. Overall, a great time. <laughs> How sick, so, though? How sick, though, would it have been? Caroline leaned over and asked me if this was going to happen at some point. And obviously, I didn't know. But how sick would it have fucking been if when they were talking about because, you know, that was that great scene where he's like, I thought you were going to be black, which yeah, is yeah, the hint black. to us that Miles is coming, awesome. right? How yeah, yeah. fucking sick would it have been if the animated Miles had swung in and fought with him? That would have been so dope, dude. That just that cartoon fighting with him, that probably would have made you hate it even more. But I would have been so in, dude, on some Roger Rabbit shit. It's just, it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, just for a three hour, how long was that movie? Two and a half hours? Damn near three hours, it felt like. Bro, I'm not yeah, going to lie. There were times when it so felt long. There's so much dialogue and there's like... And all they're doing is building the story for Toby and Andrew. And it's just like, they're going to, it doesn't make, I don't know, but I get it. Little kids like it. That's okay, good. So that was, I was going to ask, he's four. It's almost three hours long. Did he give a shit halfway no, through towards anymore? The end, he, towards the end, it was time to go. Like yeah, you wanted yeah, to go. Yeah. I he was being good. Don't get me wrong. But he just tell you just like, oh, I'm ready to well, get yeah, out. Of here. course, dude. I remember fucking my earliest movie theater memory is, uh, going to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 uh, with my mom and my dad. And when the uh, when they first get to Japan, it plays like feudal J Japanese music, like uh -huh. heavy drum and bass. And it yeah. fucking scared the shit out of me. Oh, and I was like, and I was like, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. And so we left. That's my earliest memories, freaking out at the music in Ninja Turtles 3 and having to leave. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that, dude, this movie was, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know if I could have handled a lot of the noise and shit that these action movies have when I was that young anymore. Like, when we yeah. were young, it wasn't that loud and shit. Now, dude, okay, I don't know. I Maybe it's just because I haven't been to a blockbuster in the theater in a long time, but our fucking shit was rocking and rolling, dude. My seat was moving the whole fucking time from the base. Just like... It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Uh, our theater, we went to a, like an 8K IMAX or whatever, whatever that DLP. 8K, shows. yeah, it's like the, it's what they have at the Draft House, but they put them on large format screens now, so it's like crazy. Uh, it almost makes the image look 3D. It's so sharp. But we got into the theater and realized that uh, we had accidentally got tickets at a D box theater. Do you know what D box is? Uh. It's like a roller coaster, bro. You, <laughs> it's an extra twenty dollars a ticket, and there's this like it's half the theater is red seats. Okay, and we were like, what the fuck is that? It's these seats. These motherfuckers during the movie were going like that scene from Bean. They were getting fucking thrown around the whole goddamn movie, dude. I was like, after the first hour, I would have been like, I need my fucking money back, dude. This is crazy. They were literally moving nonstop for three hours. Dude. Yo, dude, at the end when they were swinging everywhere, the chairs were just going left to right. You just saw a bunch of heads swinging. It was weird, dude. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even bring this up. Uh, we've got 10 minutes. The James Webb Space Telescope. Did Hold you on, learn dude. anything new this week? Dude, I was actually about to say, I've been really freaking struggling today. Oh, no. What's wrong? I've been struggling with outer space, man. <laughs> this whole James Webb thing has me on another freaking... It has me in another universe, man. Tell me yeah, I'm, it, learning, I'm learning more and more and more. It's actually being launched on New Year's Eve now, potentially. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Christmas you said Eve, the 24th, right? Yes, Christmas yeah, Eve. Yeah. That's the right day. And then also, I, I know we mentioned that it was $10 billion and it's been delayed for years. We for, failed to mention that the lifespan of this fucking telescope, their projection <laughs> is that they want it 
it will be a success if it lasts five and a half years. And for comparison, the Hubble has been around for how long? 31. Dude, and then on top of that, to graduate college to become a doctor uh-huh. takes average seven to 10 years. Right. Yes. Yes. This, this thing couldn't it, even be a doctor. And it cost, and it cost to become a doctor probably $500,000. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's a lot of scholarships, dude. That's a lot of Don't scholarships. You think? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, and I am one for interstellar travel and, and like to, to explore and like yeah, all that. Get stuff. Out there. Like, yeah. Yeah. It just seems like this is really bad timing to send a $10 billion telescope into the middle of fucking Lagrange two. And it just has its own. I'm learning so much. And also, I mean, but at the same time, it's so fascinating and I do want to see it happen and I do want to see it unfold. But again, there's 110 membrane pins. And if one of those does not pop off, from the very beginning. So, okay, so it launched into space. The, the law, it, 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 it opens up, or you know what I mean? It leaves the vessel, it goes out there, and it's like a little, it's not unfolded, it just goes out there, and then it goes to LaGrange 2. And when it gets there, it has to what wait. What if like, they accidentally send it to LaGrange, Texas? <laughs> and it's like, it has to cool down, remember? Because it has to be cold. Right, it has right. To be, the infrared telescope only works when it's cold. And right. then it's like, okay, let's push a button. It's like, so there's 110 pins they call membrane pins if one of these 110 pins just one one doesn't pop off it's done it's over kaput no worky no more just there just floating around right there right behind the moon and guess what we can't do forever we can't get it back or fix it because we can't go there yeah, we yeah. can't go there. I want to so, add this. Hold on, I want to add this to this because this is what you're talking about. Uh, unfolding and unstacking the sun shield's layers. It's just one thing that this thing has to do during deployment. Okay, the process just to unfold and unstack takes 29 days on the edge. <laughs> That's what yep. the NASA is saying. NASA themselves are saying they're dubbing that 29 days on the edge because for a month. For a month, they're going to have to 24-7 watch this thing to make sure, uh, did we just blow $10 billion? Yep, 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 yep. And also, it's essentially aluminum foil that is the, the shield, the sun shield that we referred to, that has helium running through it to keep it cold. They have these crazy, they take this like crazy like tape, like essentially duct tape and like that's that's reflective and they do it on there's like just in case there's a tear it won't tear all the way through it's like dude this is fucking crazy dude it's nuts and, and one crazy thing is you told like we talk a lot about the hubble and its relationship to this but i mean just so everyone's aware like i mean in case you didn't know i mean it's 30 years too late to be learning about it but the hubble it orbits right and it sends yeah. this picture of shit this we will can, not be orbiting this no. will not be orbiting. This is well, heading to a to a space parking spot, basically. Well, no, it but it will be in an orbit technically, but it'll be orbiting in the, yes in Lagrange two. It, essentially, it'll be orbiting like in its own little Just in orbit. one little spot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah essentially, which and is so, wildly different than what the Hubble did. But it seems like this is going to get more info somehow. And it keeps on being referred to, and we did say that the su- su- successor to the yeah, Hubble. This, but is, they this are is the too- successor to the Hubble. But it actually is more relative to a couple of other telescopes up there because it is um, it's an infrared telescope and the in the Hubble is a mirror based telescope and something else to say the Hubble has lasted for 31 years. If you look at the very first picture taken by the Hubble all the way to the ones that have just been now coming out, they're drastically better. Like like the, the original Hubble pictures are like really grainy not very clear still quite amazing but then you look at the ones now and they're like holy shit like 4k shit you know what i mean right right yeah yeah the reason Which, being, how did they do that did they like send like a flash drive with an update or something let me tell you and so essentially it's a mirror based uh a mirror based telescope is a hubble the mirror cannot be changed out in the telescope and the mirrors will over time, all mirrors apparently, which because they're glass, they all degrade. Like if, if you look at like a mirror, an old mirror, you'll notice it's thicker at the bottom than at the top. It's because it's know. like essentially a liquid in a way. And it's oh, just I like, really, I never knew that. Bottom. Yeah. And so I'm assuming that's like what's kind of going, but there's no gravity up there. I think it's just like the sun and wear and everything. I don't know. I'm not a fucking astronaut. Well, but there's I, elements in space. There's, there's harsh elements in space. So sure. even if there's not gravity, there's still things to fuck it up. 
Yes, it's called a vacuum. And so uh, that's yeah, what space is. Your mom's is. called a vacuum. No, not your mom, though, because I love your mom. <laughs> oh, happy birthday to your mom, by the way. It's not my mom's fucking birthday. My mom's birthday yes, it is. is in, no, it's not. My mom's birthday is in August. Is in July. <laughs> it's my nephew's birthday. <laughs> Whose birthday? It's your my nephew? nephew's birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, you my get, nephew. Did you get your nephew and my mom confused? I always thought they had the same birthday. <laughs> no. Do you have a? Does your niece have a birthday in July? Maybe that's what it was. No, she doesn't. So, anyways. Okay. So what's happening? It's so weird. I always think your mom's birthday. I, you know how many people I tell that your mom's birthday is the winter solstice? It's not. Isn't that okay. weird? It's just not even close. It's in July. What the fuck? So and my weird. dad's is in August. You're nowhere near any of my parents. Well, maybe my maybe my bio mom's birthday is a, <laughs> is a winter solstice. She was a cold bitch. God damn, got her. Uh, so anyway, so. So anyways, but the thing about the, the reasons get better because they can man that telescope to repair it. So they just right. upgrade it over and over and over over the past 30 years. When you say and man it, do you mean they're sending someone up there to actually physically yeah. man it or they're send doing it virtually steering humans. it? They send humans to How it. How big is get, that fucking thing? It's pretty big. And they spacewalk and they repair it. How do you think they get pictures of the Hubble telescope? No, no, no. I just figured space. the ISS I figured the ISS took care of all that shit. I don't think the and ISS and the Hubble... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think that I don't think the ISS and the Hubble are anywhere near each other. Damn, they're dude. both in orbit. They're not like they're know, not like you know, highway passing each other. Like, do you know how many times? Because okay, so like the 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 image of the Hubble orbiting is in every single disaster movie ever. They always show a shot from Earth of like the Hubble flying past us, right? Yeah, That's yeah. the Hubble guys, the big satellite from the movies. Um, do you know how many times it goes around Earth a day? Three. 15. Damn. Yeah, that fucking thing is going fast. Because they're going 17,000 miles an hour. Nah, this says they're only going 30 miles an hour. No, it's 17,000 miles an hour. They're going really fast. And so, um, with that said, anyways, back to this fucking right. James Webb, this James Webb telescope. And again, I'm, if it works, Fuck yeah. Joel, you made a very good point. They should have just launched that bad boy up there. And when it worked, been like, guess what, Look we, what we did? <laughs> like, what? And so uh, it's just like, yeah, I, I explained it to Joel. It's like, uh, it's like trying to convince your parents when you're like 10 years old to take you to a rated R movie. You know, it's like, you've, I've seen this kind of, st it's only rated R because of violence. And I've watched, I watched uh, this movie with you before and it's just the same thing. Your parents taking all of a sudden titties, you know, it's like, oh shit. Hold on, hold on. Wait, before you finish that thought that I just has kept reminding me since you said it of that Simpson scene where they sneak out of school. It's Nelson, Milhouse and Bart and they go to the movie theater because it says naked lunch. And that's the David L or the Cronenberg movie based on yeah. the book. It's fucking not what it sounds like. It's just bonkers and very strange. And they walk out and he's like, uh, and Nelson looks at the screen and goes, you know, I could think of two things wrong with that title. <laughs> and it's like, it's the opposite of what you're saying. Like they equate R rated movies with nudity. Whereas <laughs> we, yeah. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. No, but no, uh, I interrupted you, man. So what's happening is, and so essentially they're talking to these guys that like are in charge of this telescope. And they're like, so what if something, this stuff doesn't work? What if the one of these pins don't pop? Or what if these, uh, what if the, the mirrors don't, the hexagonal mirrors don't calibrate properly? They're like, well, we have, we have, we have, we have answers before it's just completely abandoned. They're like, well, what is it? Like, well, essentially we take the remote and we take our remote and we sit and we send signals up there to you know just to give it some light like you just like like the uh, the the reporter goes so you just shake it it's like yeah essentially we just shake it <laughs> it's like it's like so like what we do with our with our junk down here if it doesn't work we just shake it and bang it on the table like yeah that's essentially what we're doing until everything starts working again it's like ha ha they shouldn't have said shit it's gonna be yeah, a dude. big fat disaster but, but more to, i mean in the james web we got more to talk about that and also Joel and I are going to be the first to applaud it when they start sending it, send us back images and stuff. That's not going to be another seven months. We don't even yeah, know. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be a long time. And here's the thing. We haven't said it, but uh, it's currently right now, December 21st. Uh, this will be the last episode before Christmas. So have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Uh, be safe. 
uh, give yeah, love to always. you and your family and whatnot. Uh, we will be back next week uh, on Thursday ish. Um, and I'm going to see you in two days for a yes, little bit. Yes, you will. Because uh, I got you some presents and that's all you want. You don't even want to see me. You're like, oh, can I stop by and get those no, presents? No, I was doing that so you didn't have to ship them and I could see you. We wanted to stop in Austin for a little bit. I can make that happen. Well, yeah, like Joel said, everybody be safe after this weekend. A lot of wackos on the road. And thank you for listening to another episode of I See If I Believe You. And if you like what you see and you can really help us out by clicking right here to subscribe. And last week's episodes were Joel's point right there. All right. Later, y'all. Bye.